How are the changes that we as human beings have made to migratory birds' flyways changing the birds themselves? Yeah, that's really interesting. So like, okay, let's think about what it is a bird needs to be able to do to fly for seven days nonstop. Because this is crazy. To fly seven days without stopping, they often double their body weight or more. And most of that body weight that they put on is actually fat. So unlike, you know, if you look on the start of the Boston Marathon, you know, start line, right? You tend not to be seeing a whole bunch of like people that just tried to eat as much as possible and put on a whole bunch of fat to start the race. That's because humans burden carbohydrates as they're about to start exercising. Birds though, about 80% of what they're burning is fat. And then they're burning, they're burning some protein, they're burning some sugars if they have them, but a lot of it is fat. So birds are getting really fat and then they're getting up there. And in the case of shorebirds and especially godwits, they're flapping the whole time. So that means that they're using that fat as energy. They're using burning muscle to get water because when they're flapping that whole time, they're not drinking any water and then they're not sleeping at least so far as we know. Maybe they can take some little cat naps in ways that we haven't quite figured out, but so far as we know, they're not sleeping. So then if we're thinking about, yeah, those hurdles that humans are putting in front of these birds, right? They're prolonging, for instance, the amount of time that it takes for them to fuel up for this migration because there might not be as much food or maybe there's disturbances that mean that they can't spend as much time feeding as they might otherwise do. And then the umbrella that sort of on top of all of this is global climate change. That's just mucking with all of the, all living things sort of take for granted. The synchronies that have developed over evolutionary time are now getting thrown out of whack. So that means that birds are now migrating at times that maybe aren't appropriate in order to make use of the resources they need. They get to a place and the resources were there yesterday and they're not there today. And so, what we see then, right, is sometimes these birds are making these flights with less fuel than they would otherwise need. So they have to stop more frequently. Or, yeah, they're getting there at just the wrong time. And so then they're getting buffeted by storms or cold weather or maybe extreme heat that tax them in sort of ways that they aren't sort of prepared to do. So there are really just all of these myriad changes, but that they're really sort of felt at this physiological level, that they just determine what a bird can do on a day-to-day -day basis.